Welcome back. So in keeping with our theme of back to school, which has taken us to back to our best selves in any way we can possibly get there, we are now going back to our best selves through love. And we're going to do it by going back to school, the school of love. And there is not another person on the planet better to take us there than our friends who are friends of the show. And you've seen them before. Matthew and Orna Walters are experts in love and relationship. They have been guests on The Millionaire Matchmaker. If you haven't seen them, you can go Google that episode. It's fabulous. And they have a new book coming out to which I say, yay, finally. Um, it is called, and I want to get this right, getting it right this time, right? Break free from your hidden blocks to lasting love. Welcome back, my friends. Thank you for being here. And one would think that having you on speed dial as your friend would actually, by osmosis, make me better at this. But, oh no, I need you as much as the next person. <laughs> uh, thank you, Lauren. So great to be here. Yes, yeah, so great to be back. Thank you for having us. And, you know, it's the fall is back to school. And I thought, well, what, you know, what a great time for us to talk about getting into love school. Yeah, and I would love just say... Just knowing us isn't enough because you notice the name of our work is creating love on purpose, right? Which is about being purposeful and taking action to create the thing that you want. Okay. I will consider myself duly scolded. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'll have to find a ruler around here to tap myself with. But with that in mind, I know that I'm not the only one who who says, okay, I could I could do better. And that's really what the theme of the show is. How can I be my best in all areas? So how can we be our best in going about finding love and keeping it? So start me out. 101. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make is they are purposeful in every area of their life, except when it comes to love and dating. Because we're sort of sold this ridiculous myth and the moment we pop out of the womb and, you know, and then it's, it's, you know, over and over again through all the songs and poems and movies. I mean, forget the rom-coms and the Disney fantasies and the, you know, all of it, the Disney princesses, and, you know, marrying the, those prints that, you know, they change for them. They do all these things that men don't actually do. Um, so <laughs> I just want to say that one of the most important things is to recognize, number one, if you haven't figured it out on your own by the time, you know, you're what, like 25, 30? 30, I would say. 30, yeah. then it's maybe it's time to get some professional help, just like you would in any other part of your life. And so don't expect it just to land in your lap just because, you know, the, the stars aligned or whatever. As a matter of fact, for myself, I, I, I'm i always super cautious when somebody says, well, I just think when I meet the right person, we'll look in each other's eyes and, and I'll just know. Isn't and that how it happened for you guys? Not at all. Nope. <laughs> no. We were actually, we met in a business networking group and we figured out that we were in that same meeting room once a month for a year before we ever spoke to each other. <laughs> and I knew who he was. So it's it's not like we saw each other from across the room. It's like, oh, that's my person, right? Mm -hmm. and, yep. and it all just happened. It ha it didn't happen that way for us. It doesn't happen that way for most people. We have this belief sort of ingrained in us that love and romance and relationship is instinctual. And it's not. It's not instinctual at all. Sex, procreation, that's instinctual. Right. That's built into who we are as human beings. But love, we learn love. We learn love in our family. We learn love from our experiences. We learn love from society. And we don't have a lot of good models about love and how to do it. Yeah. I was going to say, we learn what not to do more than what to do. So where do we learn what to do? Help us. Well, here's the thing, because only when it comes to love, are we in reaction to the past, right? Like if I mean, if you had a friend call you up, Lauren, and that friend was like, oh my God, this is the worst thing. And you're like, oh my gosh, what happened? And if this friend told you, well, I was at work and I asked for a raise and I didn't get it. And then it felt so horrible, I quit. And now I'm looking for a job where I never have to ask for a raise again. You would literally think that person has lost their marbles. 
Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So we do that with love all the time. So what you want is not the opposite of what you don't want. And look, there's tons of studies that what we focus on grows. So when you have a bad experience and we get it, having your heart broken is one of the most painful experiences mm -hmm. in life. And the reason why that's part of our growth is because when your heart breaks, it actually breaks open to hold more love. Hmm. And I want your audience to really understand that this is a maturation process because what Can happens say when- that again? Say that, say that again. <laughs> when your heart breaks, it actually breaks open to hold more love. Hmm. Okay. You th open. Think about in in um, Japanese art. I, I can't remember what it's called, but they have you know like they have a vase and the vase has been cracked. It's the wabi sabi. The wabi sabi, right? And the crack in the vase is actually kept, and it's highlighted. It's not tried. They're not trying to hide the crack because the crack becomes part of the beauty of the vase, and that's sort of what happens to us as human beings when our heart breaks. It, it breaks us open in a way that allows us to be more vulnerable, more uh, open, more more loving to ourselves. Then why does it feel like when your heart breaks, it actually gives you more reason to shut it down? Well, because we are indoctrinated into this myth that so, so one day, you know, when you reach for an orange in the supermarket, someone else will reach for that same orange and you're, you know, you'll, that'll be that awkward thing and your eyes will connect and hearts bubble, hearts will come up between you and, you know, whatever. Like, I mean, we hear it over and over and over again. And there is this dance of relationship because we hear all the time that opposites attract. And that's true because remember species survival is instinctual like matthew said sex is instinctual but long-term monogamous relationship a marriage for a lifetime that's not instinctual that's something that is purposeful that you must be purposeful about and so choosing who you share your life with is the single most important decision you will ever make in your life and people are leaving it to chance so if your dishwasher breaks you wouldn't just sit there thinking well if it's meant to be it'll just fix itself and we want you to understand that going to love school doesn't mean that you have to change who you are or you have to put on any pretense. As a matter of fact, we always say, let your freak flag fly so your beloved can find you because your beloved will love those things about you that all the other people sort of were like, I'm out of here now because I've seen that icky thing, you know? I would say Matthew and I aren't sitting here today because everything went right. Like so many things went wrong. And with the right person, you figure it out together. And that dance of relationship, when we come together, we it is a chemical high, right? We, we are literally, we're that sensation. There's no way for me to say, oh, back in 2007, Matthew and I met and we fell in love. There's no other way for me to say that, right? And so it sounds like, you know, we just slipped in a banana peel and, poof, you know, we knocked into each other and yeah. it magically, you know, we figured it out. That's not how it works. But when you first come together, that sensation, it is, I mean, science says it's like being, I don't know, I've never taken heroin, but they say it's like that kind of high, right? Falling in love with somebody. But eventually those chemicals wear off. You know, so just like if you've have, if you've raised kids, you know, when they hit those teenage years, it's difficult because mm -hmm. when that kid becomes a teenager, it's their job to individuate from the family. So we have this chemical high sensation where we bond. We think that other person is just like us. We overlook their flaws and we look overlook all the red flags. And then we do end up into the second stage of relationship. So first stage is romance stage. We all know that one. But the second stage people avoid and don't want to think about is there is a power struggle stage in stage two. And it happens in every relationship. Sometimes it's subtle. Sometimes it's a cold war where you've just decided not to talk about the things that you don't have agreement on. Sometimes it's explosions and hand grenades, right, all over the place. We're very passionate people. We've, we've had some hand grenades in our relationship. But we also have communication tools, yeah. right? We have the ability to calm ourselves down and own and take responsibility for our behavior when we were upset, when we were triggered. And these skills are not taught. The skills about how to communicate. And when we talk about love school, 
I think one of the first things we want to think about is how do you communicate to your partner? How do you communicate when you're upset? How do you communicate when things are heated between the two of you, when there's disagreement about what to do next in your marriage, in your relationship, in your lives together? And so, you know, so much of therapy teaches us to compromise. Well, if you give up that and then I'll give up this and then we'll meet in this mediocre middle and we'll both be upset. Right. And no, that's not it. It's how do you create a win win between the two of you? Because ultimately, look, that is the hardest thing because it takes a lot more time, energy, effort, and creativity to create a win win. If one person's there and one the other person's here. And to be honest, that piece around creating a, a deeper connection through conflict isn't about deciding who was right, who was wrong, who misbehaved. It's it's a personal journey. And that personal journey is where you're able to take responsibility and say, I, I'm sorry, you know, I lost my, <laughs> right? I'm sorry. And I got stuck in my story of whatever, right? Because we get triggered back into these emotional stories. And when you take responsibility for your emotional stories and you sit across from somebody else who loves you and you share that vulnerability and you're able to work out through that conflict the deeper connection doesn't come from agreement. That's an ego desire. That deeper connection through conflict comes from being authentic. And what most people don't understand is what authenticity is. It's kind of like this buzzword. You want to know? I do. <laughs> so being authentic means one thing and one thing only. It means you've identified how you feel in that moment and you're sharing that with another person. It's speaking your truth. Now, it doesn't mean that your feelings are the most important thing on planet Earth because your feelings will change. And that's why we say you shouldn't pick a partner based on a feeling. I mean, I love Matthew of every fiber of my being. I love this man. But you know what? I've been angry with him, like with the, you know, with the burning passion of 10,000 suns. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but so the those feelings, right, they, they change. Our feelings change. They're momentary. But when you're authentic in the moment and you speak how you feel in the moment, that is your authentic truth in that moment. And, and that is actually something that we can all try, meaning it's, it takes it's, practice. Yeah, it's literally something that we can do today because whether we're in that heat of 10,000 suns or we're just in that slightly pissed off, you forgot to close the toothpaste, mm -hmm. um, which is also an option there's still the moment in time where we make the choice of how to speak our truth. Yeah, and, and the key is to start to get in touch with your own feeling state and to separate your feeling state from the story about your feeling state. Right? So you're driving down the freeway. To everything else in your history. Exactly. You're driving down the freeway. Somebody cuts in front of you. You know, how do you react? Do you get angry? Do you honk the horn? Do you speed up and tailgate them, right? What comes up from you? And part of that is the story we have about that experience, right? Is that person cutting you off? Are you are you feeling emotion because there's fear and you are you don't feel safe on the road? Are you feeling emotion because there's a lack of respect and you feel angry because somebody has in some way disrespected you? Right. What is the story? What's the meaning that you're giving the event? And when it's another person sitting across from you and those emotions are triggered, it's really easy to say the emotion is your fault. The emotion belongs to you. my upset belongs to you because you did A, B, C and D. And if you didn't do A, B, C and D, then I wouldn't be feeling this emotion. Well, the truth is you're going to feel that emotion if anybody does one of those things. The emotion right. is yours and your story about the emotion is yours. We always say it's like a funhouse mirror. This person sitting across from you Hi. is a reflection of you. <laughs> and what they're reflecting back to you are the things you love about yourself. And they're also reflecting back to you the things you don't like about yourself. Right. And when you realize that, when you realize, you know, what does it mean to you when they don't put the, you know, the cap back on the toothpaste? Is it disrespect? Is it, you know... Is it chaos? Does it not feel safe? There's a lot of ways that that can trigger us, but it, you're the one who has that story of disrespect or chaos. They're not disrespecting you or creating chaos in your life. 
No, that's my interpretation. And I'd like yeah. to share just a really quick story before I find out more about where we can find you and how people can get more time with you specifically. I was about seven, six or seven. It was a Saturday afternoon. I was in my parents' room watching television. They were in the kitchen and um, I don't know where my brother was, but I wasn't my brother's keeper. And all of a sudden my parents were shouting which they never did. I don't think in my whole life I ever heard them raise their voices to each other. They yelled at us all the time, but but that was different. But they were yelling at each other. And all of a sudden I was crying. Mm -hmm. And my and my father walked in the bedroom and saw me crying. And he, why are you crying? Because you and are you and mommy going to get divorced? And he was like, what? And I said, yeah, because all the couples I know who yell at each other are getting divorced. My girl, my friend's parents, my aunt and uncle, these were people who argued all the time and they were getting divorced, but my parents never raised their voices to each other. He called my mother in and said, okay, ask me the question again. Are you and mommy getting divorced? No, we're not getting divorced. Do you want to know what happened? Yes. Mommy and I each made separate plans for tonight and we forgot to talk to each other. And we assumed, each one assumed that the other knew what we were doing. And it was only just now that we figured out that we were each getting dressed and ready to go to two different places and never kind of, you know, sealed the deal on the Saturday night plan. He said, so no, we will. And I say that to say that next month they will celebrate 65 years married and 68 years together. Mm -hmm. But that incident itself informed a lot of their future interactions. And we've talked about it a number of times in my growing up and also in my being grown up, right? It's just, mm -hmm. it's it. but yes, the interpretation and the story of that we can create for ourselves and take it back to our partners, there's no end. There's, there's no end to it. So how can we find you for more help? <laughs> well, that's easy. You can just go to loveonpurpose.com and you can subscribe there to our newsletter. It's called Love Notes Weekly. It mm -hmm. goes out every Monday and it um, starts with a little quote that we write about love. And we also have a award-winning blog. So we have tons of great articles if you like to read and uh, tons of stuff there. So if you want to know what we're up to, loveonpurpose.com. And that's also, I'm guessing, the best way to find you if people would like to contact you directly. Absolutely, yes. 100%. I believe there's a contact us form on our website that's really easy yeah. to find. You just click there's the not, contact there us. will be. If there's not, there <laughs> will be it's there. The the day. <laughs> it's 100%. There's a contact us form. We'd love to hear from you. And I mean, we, our goal really is to break this myth and bust this myth that you're just going to one day meet this magical, mythical unicorn of a person and you'll just never have a disagreement and you'll be of one mind and I mean, it's, it's the fantasy, right? I mean, it, it sounds ridiculous when I say it like that, because just like when you have challenges in life as a single person, you will also have challenges in life when you're coupled up mm -hmm. and how you navigate those challenges is and, really that key to creating that deeper connection. Because I, I think back to when we fell in love and way back in 2007, and yes, it was romantic and it was amazing and it had all of those yummy good feelings to it but when I compare that feeling to what we have now all these years later through all that we've been through together that feels a little shallow it feels a little surfacey well and it's all, different and every love story needs to start somewhere exactly it absolutely needs to start somewhere and the you best need the romance phase yeah it's what gets you through the power Gotta struggle get there. and yeah. for me that it starts is with you Exactly. <laughs> I love you guys. And thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for your genius for sharing it always. And we will definitely be back, hopefully before the book comes out in 2025. So we'll follow up with the school of love. I'm kind of liking this idea as a steady course. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so thank much, you. Lauren. And we'll be right back.